Welcome back. This time around, we're going to create the uh, the boot micro SD card for the PiDP11. Um, I've got to confess, it's actually the second time I'm shooting this. Uh, the first time around, I made the classic mistake of, well, not reading the manual, and I made a few mistakes that uh, took a little while to fix, and I didn't really describe the process of fixing those, so didn't make a particularly good video, so I'm, I'm shooting it a second time. This time, I'll follow the instructions and we won't have all that cleaning up to do. So, um, yeah, I have a, a Raspberry Pi here. Um, I can't remember what model this is. Um, it, it, actually, it is... A, it's a Raspberry Pi uh, 2 Model B. And we'll be putting a software on this uh, micro SD card. Uh, it's just a, a little 8 gig card. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's get into that. Okay, so first things first, we'll uh, go to raspberrypi.com and go to software. We want, we've got the image, uh, I've already got that. Download options. Raspberry Pi OS, and it's the 32-bit version we need, and I'm going to get it without the desktop. So we'll go for this one. And we'll let that download for a minute. Okay, so I've got the Raspberry Pi image there. I'll just put it in a Pi directory. So it was uh, easy to locate. Okay, so we'll take our uh, SD card, eight card, eight gig card, completely empty, freshly formatted, into our card reader, plug that into our uh, USB port, and there it is, drive F. So we should be able to, because I've got the Raspberry Pi etchery thing installed, I think I can just double click on this. Yeah, Raspberry Pi imager. And we'll put it on drive F and write. Yes, and Lexar micro SD reader is the USB device that I've got the card plugged into. And we'll uh, speed our way through that. And uh, we'll be back again when that's completed. Okay, so that's finished. We'll just cancel X. We don't want to format it. <laughs> and you just written it. Uh, you can remove the SD card from the reader. So unplug that. Take our card out and insert it. I can never remember which way it goes. That way, I think, into the Pi. Right, so I plug the power in. And we are now booting. Keyboard. I would have usually go for English US. Uh, I can never remember which keyboard to pick here. Um, we'll go that one. I can, not planning on using the keyboard much anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Right, new username. Now this is where we want to. Be careful, we need to put in Pi because the Pi DP11 software assumes that it will be Pi. And I'll just put in Pi as the password if it'll let me because we're going to set it to auto login as Pi anyway. Pi, password is Pi. And now we can go. I think it's Raspi config. 
and where I'm trying to remember which option it is. No, is it under system options. So we want the console automatically logged in as the Pi user. And I suspect this is going to yeah, make me reboot. So when this comes back up, we should be at command line of the Pi user. We might get some complaints about um, power supply voltage here. The um, power supply I'm using is one of those cheap and cheerful ones. Um, I do have a proper Raspberry Pi power supply somewhere. I've just got to find it. Right, and here we are. So, sudo make opt Pi DP 11. CD op. If I could type Pi IDP 11. Sudo w get. I'm typing again. Sudo w get http pydp.net slash pydp11 pydp11.tar.gz. And sudo gzip minus d pydp. Yep. Sudo xvf pydp. Oop, pi. Yep. I said yep. And then sudo opt. Oh, actually, there's a little fix we've got to do as per the instructions. So, because we've got a, a recent version of uh, the operating system. Um, if we don't do this now, the software will fail to install. And we want to link. Lib read line. Dot so dot eight to lib readline so dot seven. Right, so I've created that link. So you go back to opt yep, sudo opt pi dp pi dp eleven install. And this will take a little while, so uh, we might speed this up a little bit. Ah, yes, and it's complaining there because um, I think because I don't have the uh, desktop environment installed, but I don't believe that matters. So we can go, oh, we're in opt party p11 already, so sudo w get p pydp.net slash pydp11 slash systems.tar.gz
was one of the slowest downloads I've done for a while. So we will G zip minus D. System is not tired of it. We could actually do this in the same step as untarring it. But uh, we'll follow the instructions. We could uh, tar. We could put XVZF here, and we could have just untarred the uh, the gzipped archive. But systems dot Now that's done, we should be able to reboot. And hopefully when it boots back up, it'll automatically start the uh, PyDP11 emulation software, which is based on the, the SimH software. Right, and there we are. We're um, in the... Uh, PDP-11 simulation software, which, as I say, is based on the CMH software. So at this point, we're done. Our, our Raspberry Pi is set up. So we'll just control A, D, because this runs, the emulation runs inside of the screen terminal multiplexer, and control A and D detaches from that. So we do sudo, if I could type, shut down H now. We can shut our Pi down and put it aside until our PyDP11 uh, hardware build is complete. Okay, so that's the uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, software installation done for our PyDP11. Uh, start to finish, I think that took ballpark around 30 minutes. Um, there was a bit of time in there where I was digging around finding cables and doing video things. But yeah, it would have been ballpark around 30 minutes. So... Next up, we'll, uh, in the next video, make a start on, on building the hardware. And we should hopefully get to the point where we're ready to test the hardware. And to do some basic testing in the hardware, we need the Raspberry Pi that we've just set up, which is why we do that first. So, um, yeah, if, uh, if you're interested, then uh, look out for that video. Um, in the meantime, if you want to subscribe, feel free, like, um, leave me a comment. Tell me what I could have done better. Um, yeah, and uh, see you in the next one. Cheers.